there seems to be a lot of barriers that people put up in work to say, well, here's a reason why you might not be good at this job. Yes, but there's 99 other reasons why you might be good at this job. And I think it's just about education at the end of the day. G'day, I'm Deborah Caldo, and welcome to the Red Giraffe Solutions Expanding Worlds podcast, where we aim to support you as you help your young person with additional needs plan for their future. A future where they are safe, secure, and live a rewarding and fulfilling life. From around the world, I share stories and share solutions from people making this possible right now. I'm a parent of a young person with additional needs, so I understand the challenges. Many of the people I've interviewed on this podcast have already helped me design a better future for my daughter, and I hope that they might help you as well to imagine what's possible for your young person. In last week's episode, one of the things that my guest Alex Barker from AbilityNet talked about was the need to be more aware of the options that are out there around technology and how many of us aren't as aware as perhaps we could be, and I'd certainly include myself in that group. This week, in the second part of my conversation with Alex, the focus is on work and the technology that can support people when they're in paid employment. But as much as we talk about technology, this is also a conversation about mindset. And Alex puts it very well when he says, The technology is out there, you just need to have the mindset to use it. So this is as much about attitude as anything else, and employers being open to the technology that could help them access a group of people with unique skills. I've heard it before, and Alex talks about it as well, about the impact the pandemic has had on opening up a new way of working based around technology. So it's obvious the positive role technology can play in the workplace. But enough from me, let's hear more from Alex on this topic. What kind of technology can really help in the workplace? What are some of the things that you see going on that are really going to help people with additional needs get increase the numbers getting paid employment? The first thing that I wanted to say is it's about having the right culture and the right understanding in an organisation. Some organisations are better than others. I know that disabled people are really underrepresented in the workforce. People with disabilities have got a great skill set. You just need them to use the right sort of technology. So, for example, ironically, for most of my time working, I've had a full-size keyboard. But now I've got a little small compact keyboard because it's easier to get from one side to the keyboard to the other. And other people who are identified as neurodiverse might need technology like mind mapping to produce really, really good documents. Someone who's got, say, hand and arm issues might not be able to use the keyboard as effectively, but they've got a really good speaking voice. So voice recognition takes over where the keyboard doesn't. And sometimes it's just about being open-minded and thinking, OK, this client is the best fit for the job. They need additional technology. Let's see what we can do to get you in the right technology. Technology is there if you've got the mindset to use it. From a British next point of view, it's always really, really useful to have a frank discussion between you and the person with a lived experience to find out what they actually need, because a lot of the time, you don't need to know what they will need. The person with a lived experience will say, I need A, B and C, and I can tell you where to get them. Do you think then from the sort of employer's point of view, there's still that idea as well, it's going to be really expensive? Yeah, so the majority of technology that they might want, say a keyboard or a a rollerball or a mouse, you could probably get for less than a couple of hundred pounds. I think one of the difficulties that employers have is trying to work out how reasonable adjustment looks within their team. And it's all about just having an open discussion and saying, OK, how can I, as an employer, help you as my employee? It really saddens me that some people are fantastic within organisations, but there is still the stigma of having a disability and going to work. And, and basically, I'm not different from someone who's able-bodied. I've got a mortgage to pay. Because it actually gives people a feeling of self-worth. 
And I think sometimes if you have a disability, your level of self-worth maybe isn't as great as someone who hasn't got one. But I think what's really, really good is that people are slowly discovering that a person with a disability has got a great skill set. I like to think I'm great at communicating with people. Oh, by the way, I, I'm disabled. And I think it's really important to try and have that mental thought process and not to try and put barriers up because there seems to be a lot of barriers that people put up in work to say, well, here's a reason why you might not be good at this job. Yes, but there's 99 other reasons why you might be good at this job. And I think it's just about education at the end of the day. When people are younger and they're in school, do you think they use a lot of technology in school and then when they leave school, it all disappears? Because I wonder if when they get to go to work, the technology that they're used to isn't there. I certainly think there are a couple of things. I think the way that people get support at school and at university and at college is quite regimented. When you're going to work, you can get access to work support, but access to work support takes a while to come through. So actually, it's all down to the employer to get the technology that people might want. So sometimes it's not really thought about and not really addressed. And I think one of the major issues is that, as I said before, people with the right assistive technology can do their job really, really well. It's just about making sure that's in place. And I do quite a lot of lived experience sessions with my colleagues and one of the things that we always talk about is, say you put on an application form, I've got dyslexia. You don't really want to get the job and turn it on the first day only to find that there's no technology available to you. And it's all about making sure that the culture is open and accessible. So there's technology there right at the start of your work journey. And I think mean, employers have got to make employees or prospective employees feel that they're going to be accepted and they're going to be welcome with open arms. We've often had people go, oh, right, we've got a disabled employee. Uh, I don't know where we can help him. And that's the wrong attitude to take. And it's always about saying to people, look, employees with disabilities have got a great skill set. They might need additional support, but we can provide that additional support and tell you what you need as long as you communicate with us before they start their job. And it's, it's all about companies going out of their way to say, OK, we value the fact that we've got employees who are disabled. Actually, there's probably more disabled people within the company that you realise. So, for example, you, know, you can see my disability because it's, it's quite evident. But, of course, if you have dyslexia, that's a disability and that's hidden. If you've got depression or if you've got epilepsy, there are also hidden disabilities. And I think it's just about coming up with the culture to make people feel welcomed. I think one of the difficulties is, if you go to uh, a job for the first time, a lot of people still hide the fact that they've got additional needs. But then they get six months down the line and their job becomes really, really tough because they haven't told someone at the interview stage or at the application stage that they've got a disability. And I think it's really, really important to make people aware of their requirements. I know that sometimes people don't like doing it, and I totally understand why. But I think sometimes when you're starting a new job, you've got to provide the information that your employer needs so they can support you more effectively. You've got to identify the fact that you might need additional help. And most of the time, HR people at only too happy to try and do what they can to help you. And if they're not, you can always give us a call and we'll advise you on what they ought to be doing. I think mean, one thing to say is since the pandemic, a lot of people have worked from home. And I do think one of the benefits to the pandemic, if you want to describe it this way, is that people realise now that people can work really, really effectively. 
And I think one of the really, really important things to say is that for a lot of people who are disabled, it's the actual getting to work that's difficult. It's the actual, you know, having to cope with all that chat around the photocopier, around the coffee machine that people tend to do. If you work from home, you've got your own environment, you can control the heat, and temperature and noise. And I think for an awful lot of people, especially those who identify as neurodiverse, it's great because they know what to expect from their environment. And I think when we talked about reasonable adjustment, reasonable adjustment might be that you work from home and you just have a half an hour chat with the boss via teams every other week or every single week. Although there's a school of thought which says you've got to be at your desk in your office to be an effective worker, that's been disproved because I think an awful lot of people now work from home and they work just as effectively, if not more, as if they worked in the office. I think it's really easy to forget how much technology impacts on our work lives because in some ways it's become so much part of what we do. But despite this, there still seems to be barriers in place when it comes to some organisations having a yes mindset when it comes to providing the right tech to support people in work and enabling them to do their jobs better, which is really that win-win result. Like many of these barriers, it does come back to education. And that is why what Alex and everyone at AbilityNet does is so important. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to listen and I hope that the stories and the solutions shared on here help you as you support your young person to create their future. And if you know anyone who would find the ideas useful, please share the podcast with them. Of course, if you want to, you can leave a review because that is another way families who need this information can find it more easily. This show is created as part of Red Giraffe Solutions. To find out what the Red Giraffe is all about, visit redgiraffesolutions.com where you'll find more resources around daily living, relationships, purpose and financial security. I'm at Deborah Caldo on Instagram and Facebook. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to have a conversation with you on any of those. Bye for now. <music>